sure I have many friends in common. Okay. So let me, um, did you start? start? Yeah, okay. okay, so let me just start off a little bit about my background. Um, to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Norman Edwards, I'm a psychologist, a uh, clinical psychologist uh, with an expertise in PTSD and trauma. Uh, also, clinical insomnia, just to add to that. Um, and I've been doing this for over 30 years. Um, I worked at the VA for 15 years working with combat soldiers. Uh, I didn't even you can come in here. Yes. Working with combat soldiers um, from every era. When I first started, uh, I was getting World War II veterans, Korean War veterans. Mm -hmm. So I've been around a lot of veterans, including, uh, including uh, soldiers who were POWs in German concentration camps, so, uh, in Stalags, whatever. Whatever, um, and um, and then of course Vietnam, uh, Operation Desert Storm, uh, and the current uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, more recently. And also, I was thinking about this because it may have said something to me about uh, someone who whose child was uh, whose soldier uh, was, you know, having to deal with some of the aftermath of what was going on and. In, in the South, in terms of bodies and stuff like that. And um, I don't know if you remember this, but I had, I had several uh, patients in New Orleans who had to clean up after Jimmy Jones's, um, the, I don't know if you remember oh. this, the sui mass suicide. Was it New Orleans? Well, the, the soldiers that I dealt with were in were at the VA in New Orleans, and they were at the, at the Air Force Base where those bodies came in and as you can imagine they were not in good shape because of the heat and it was really really kind of terrible stuff that they had to deal with so I've, I've run the gamut with uh, working with people who were actually special operators and uh, working with people who were just regular combat soldiers people who you know thought they were strong thought they were able to deal with anything and uh, in fact um, everybody has a breaking point. Even, even though special, uh, com special operators, uh, special forces kinds of do divan, whatever, they're very tough and blah, 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 but you know, even they are capable of uh, getting PTSD. Uh, no matter how tough you think you are, something can, can shove you over the, over the edge. The way I kind of describe it is um, when I work with, I work currently, um, I, I, I'm retired from the VA, but I work with police and fire in Memphis, Tennessee. And as you can, any of you know anything about Memphis, Tennessee, it's not exactly a peaceful place. Um, we've had a lot of uh, trauma in the police department, a lot of trauma in the fire department. And one of the things I tell them is, is that in the kind of job that they have, uh, if you think about a roof leak, and you put a pail under it, right? And you have the drip, drip, drip going into the pail. At some point, you're gonna to have to empty the bucket. And learning, learning to empty the bucket is really uh, pretty critical because if you don't empty the bucket, it's gonna overflow. It's gonna cause a flood. And uh, that's the way I describe kind of what happens to people, especially what we know about PTSD is anybody who's had trauma prior going into the military, prior uh, trauma is more likely to develop trauma if they are in the military and experience very traumatic events in the military. <coughs> so I wanted to start out tonight uh, really to get to know you a little bit and about what your needs are rather than just give you a lecture about PTSD. I want to know what is it that you really want to know? What's, what's on your mind? Because um, if you tell me what's on your mind, I can really address it's a small group. I can really be. We can be really informal, and I can uh, talk a little bit about what your worries are, um, and that's really what happens, you know, to really to parents, right? Is the worry, and also we're here in Israel, where we also have an additional worry about our own safety. So some people develop worries like that they're afraid to go out. Uh, or they're afraid to engage uh, at all. So um, that's really 
I want to find out what what your needs are. So. Well, I think the first thing I want to know is what are symptoms of PTSD. Okay, so the symptoms. Okay. Um, if you see somebody that you think is going through PTSD, is there something that me as a layman can do to help them? Mm -hmm. Great questions. Okay, so far. Anything else? So I would like to know, like, if they're not ready, they, if they, they, I'm not ready. You can, you can see that something's going on. It's very obvious to you. There was a before and there's an after, mm -hmm. and and but they're not, they're not ready to unpack it. Or I think it had to be packed away because they were carrying on doing their right. role, and now they're not ready. To, how you right. can get them to say, okay, yeah, now I'm ready to start on dealing with this. Right. So let me start with. And I have one more question. Okay. Sorry before you go on. Um, if you know you ha you are have this PTSD, is there anything in particular that you could do to kind of like unload, as you say? Yes. Okay. So there is treatment for PTSD, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Okay. So the the first thing uh, I'll talk about are the symptoms of PTSD. So uh, because you should know what what exactly we're dealing with here. PTSD has to have a, one component. Can anybody tell me what they think that component is? Traumatic experience. There has to be a trauma, yeah. right? Because it's called post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's, um, and, it, and it's not just any trauma. Like, you know, there are things that we consider, tra people will say that are traumatic, right? But they don't really classify as something that would cause PTSD. Now they may cause problems, they may cause symptoms, but they then they're not necessarily what we call PTSD. So what we have, the first, sim first thing that has to happen is you have to have what's called criterion A. Criterion A is the something that happens. And the something that happens has to be very serious. It has to be life-threatening. You have to experience either the threat to yourself or others, uh, either, you w either directly or you could witness it or you could be told about it, for example, if it's like someone very close to you. Um, but mostly it has to be something is really, really tremendously traumatic. Something that would be out of the un unusual experience rather than, you know, just the loss of a parent naturally would not be considered um, a criterion A for PTSD, to give an example. Uh, so the, you experience this trauma and what happens is you know, so let me kind of back up a little bit and just say, like, for example, I have, a police, I have police officers who I work with, and they're involved in either being shot at or they shoot somebody, uh, and, or they're involved in a critical incident, what we call a crit, crisis, critical incident event, and we talk to them about what they're going through. And it's natural, right after an event, to re-experience the event. So how would we re-experience the event? We would re-experience the event by thinking about it a lot, right? So let's put it in a framework you can probably relate to. If you've ever been in a car accident, right? Uh, you think about that car accident after the event has already happened, right? You replay that accident in your mind and you think about what could I have done differently? Did I, did I do everything I should have done? Uh, and you might, if it was more serious or if you really felt threatened by it, you might really carry that through to the point of thinking about it overnight, not being able to sleep, just replaying the incident over in your mind. We call that re-experiencing. So you re-experience the event. And that's normal, right? Something happens. It's normal to re-experience the event. It's normal to think about it. It might be normal to dream, dream about it. Uh, and to replay it in your mind. That is not PTSD. That is just a normal course of events. Most people who experience trauma actually recover naturally. Usually in a, a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, but most people recover naturally. When it becomes, it starts to become a problem is when you can't get those thoughts out of your mind. So what begins to happen is you start thinking about the event and it starts to cause what we call avoidance behaviors. Those avoidance behaviors, so let me just go back one step a little bit. The re-experiencing can happen in, in a basically five different ways. It can happen as just thinking about the event when you don't want to think about it, very distracting, in a distracting 